Cosplay Stitch and Seam. I'm Pannon. I'm Vfire. And I'm David. Welcome back, Vfire. We missed you last week. I'm so sorry. Hey. Yeah, we saw a long, well, not really a long trip. <laughs> it was a really short trip, but it was very like, leave Sunday, come back Monday. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. going to ask you, since you're back, our last episode, we talked kind of about the nostalgia of like older conventions. Was there is there like any activity or thing that you missed from earlier cons? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or is it mostly things you don't miss? Or <laughs> <laughs> that that's a good question. I might have to think on that one. V fire uh, really misses glomping. Oh yeah, gosh, glomping. Uh huh. Uh-huh. No. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch me. <laughs> Well, if you missed last week, you can check it out online. If you have ideas for an episode yourself and want to send that in, because that last one came from Oz Cosplay, who was one of our guests, you can do that a number of different ways. First is our email, which is cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com, or... Or you can go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com, and uh, there's the contact forms on there that you can send us, or... Go to the... (laughs) Facebook page! <laughs> Why did that give me anxiety? <laughs> no, don't get anxiety. It's just Facebook. It's just where you can go and share your horror stories and let us know what you're working on. Our fantastic community does not want you to have anxiety while you are sharing your work. It can be really anxious sharing you know, something that you don't feel is perfect, but I guarantee if, you, if I see it and I think it's really cool, I'm going to say it's cool. And that's because I think everything is cool because you made it. You made it. I'm so proud of you. Uh, if you don't like Facebook, we have a Discord. You can join our Discord where I can tell you, hey, I'm proud of you. You did the thing. And we made the lore channel. So go ch- uh, check out our lore. Um, we were talking about the Zelda live action uh, and we were who we were oh. casting as Link. Uh-huh. Um, I said Tom Hardy because if we're going to do like a stoic <laughs> no word, it would be Tom Hardy. Um, that's Dr. what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Steggy says that they are uh, uh, on board for a Danny DeVito as Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Why do I love that? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, it's so good. So if you want to have a good time like that, and also Oz, uh, Oz Costumes is been has been posting in the Food Channel top-notch, like, food photography skills i get so hungry when i'm on that channel for a while um yeah if you're on the internet and you're getting hungry and now you're looking at recipes and you want to support the show there are many different ways that you can do that you can share the podcast with a friend you can leave us a rating or review wherever you can those really help us out they really really do more like more than anything sometimes and if you've got a few few dollars in your pocket burning a hole we do have a patreon patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch for three dollars a month you get a shout out every single episode and for five dollars a month you can join our cosplay chronicles i've turned it down it shouldn't be as loud (laughs) for everybody now (laughs) see i knew it was coming just because you give such a good wind up oh thank you thank you i try and like really telegraph my moves here i think i'm Um, finally ready (laughs) (laughs) like just white knuckle on your chair okay i'm ready let's go (laughs) Uh, we play D &D and it's all cosplay themed it's a great time we have a lot of fun come join us when we do a live stream it's it's a good time but it you know every every dollar goes back into the show we're trying to make sure that like um our online service stuff is going on our website's hosted all all of that fun stuff that like you don't think about when you're hosting a podcast um so yeah those are those are my things back to other people to talk now (laughs) nice (laughs) great transition (laughs) well um we have a great episode for you today on keeping your cosplays clean uh, before we get started, I wanted to just like touch on a topic that has been very near and dear to my heart, probably for a lot of y'all, the past few weeks, past month, however long it's been. Um, but yeah, it's a hard topic to talk about, I think, but definitely needs to be. Um, we, I, I kind of mentioned a little bit in an earlier episode that you need to be like careful of what news you're consuming, make sure you're checking lots of sources and things like that. And so after I said that, I was like, I didn't give anybody like good news sources that I had gone and searched out after that bit. Um, and with, yeah, so so I got some and uh, I mean, Thank first you. of all, yeah, I mean, first of all, like 
if you have been paying attention to the news, and even if you've not, you probably know that a lot of people uh, in Palestine are suffering, like there is no humanitarian aid there. And we we want to like, even though this is just like a cosplay podcast, we want to make sure that we're using our platform for good and to help others and to inform you of what's going on around in the world. Because as much as we love cosplay and we love that that's a community that brings us together when one of us is hurting as badly as Palestine is, I mean, all of us are hurting mm -hmm. and we need to be a good support to them. And if that's not your bag, then maybe we're not the podcast for you, but it is just very important and dear to us. And so I wanted to give y'all some resources, places that you might have like heard that this is like a complicated issue and people who can help make that uh, clearer for you, help give you some history and things behind it if you don't know what's going on. One of my favorite creators of late on TikTok has been James Gets Political, and it's spelled like J-A-M-E-S-G-E-T-S-P-O-L-I-T-I-C-A-L. -E -E and you might have to rewind me and play that back to get all that. But James Gets Political um, is a Palestinian man who gives a great history of like everything that's been happening, has a lot of great references, cites sources. Um, I found him to be like really reliable and great source. Others, let's see, I have uh, on TikTok. I'm not sure how you say this username, but it's spelled I-A-M-S-B-E-I-H. Um, and oh gosh, I meant what I said about the first TikToker, about the second one. <laughs> I got them switched around. Um, but James Gets Political uh, still gives a great rundown on things that are happening. Um, but uh, the other TikToker, I am S-B-E-I-H, he gives some really good uh, firsthand perspective and also uh, goes into history and all that good stuff. Another good one is Rathbone Makes Music, R-A-T-H-B-O-N-E-M-A-K-E-S-M-U-S-I-C. That's kind of a long one, but he has some really good kind of like pocket-sized information if you want to go through that. Um, and then some others to follow. I would also say that TikTok has been helpful in learning information um, I know it is censored quite a bit on TikTok, but if a lot of the scarier things out there might be too much for you to handle at the, at the moment, um, is a good place to get started learning so you're not running into anything you're not mentally prepared for. Mm. Um, and some of the other creators, I, I would say, like, be careful when you're searching where you're searching and be respectful of your own mental health but don't give up, don't stop, keep learning. Um, on Instagram, there are three journalists on the ground that hopefully are still there to listen to when you guys hear this. Um, they're going through a lot of, a lot. Uh, there's Bisan, B-I-S-A-N, Motaz, M-O-T-A-Z, and Plestia, P-L-E-S-T-I-A. Um, if you look for them on Instagram, their stuff's pretty easy to find. Um, other ways, and these are mostly for, uh, my United States folks who are listening. I know we do have some listeners out of the country, but you can check out what, uh, boycotts are happening. Cause that's one of the ways we can use our dollars is to promote, uh, or not promote certain places. Um, BDS, which is, I think for boycotts, divestments, and I can't remember what the S is for, but they are a Palestinian group that, keeps track of like what businesses are supporting what with their monies and things like that. So they're the best source for like, if you're looking to boycott and promote boycotts, um, who to go to. I know within the US, there's kind of a blanket one, but it's not necessarily the one BDS is telling us to support. Um, so make sure you're getting your news from them first. Um, and then ways you can you can go about making changes for yourself. Um, you can call your representatives. And unfortunately, listeners, this is only in the United States. But I am sure there are ways that you can reach out 
uh, in other countries as well. Um, first one is an app called Five Calls. It's the number five and then calls, like a phone call. Um, and that puts you in touch with your representatives. Um, all it asks for is like your uh, zip code. And then it will tell you who's uh, representing you in those areas and who you're calling to leave messages with. I have been on the phone like every day this week, just leaving messages, making sure that our opinions and voices are heard. Um, and the other one, if phone calls are really scary for you, I know we talked about this app before, but there's Resist Bot. Um, and all you have to do is text 50409. It is a free service. I mean, you do only get a certain number of emails free before you have to like wait maybe about a 48 hour period before it will let you send more. Um, if you, if you get really going, <laughs> um, but, uh, you can just search the word trending. Uh, if you just text the word trending to 50409. Uh, it will give you a list of what is going on near you and in, of import in your country. Uh, again, this is just U.S., but it also lets you really easily send texts and emails or faxes uh, to your representatives to inundate them with our voices so that we don't get drowned out because that's important. Um, yeah, thank you for hearing me, and I hope that helps some people. And, and this is something that all three of us are very um, adamant about. We are going to make sure that all of the resources that Panin just mentioned are going to be in the uh, description in the episode. And just because like some of the information may change doesn't necessarily mean that the the fight has to end. Um, we're, we're just trying to make sure that people are seen as people. Um, some people yeah. make do bad things. Some people make decisions on behalf of others that everyone doesn't agree with but people are still human and that's that's the long and short of it yeah nicely said <laughs> oh thank you yeah. <laughs> so into our episode um have you ever had a cosplay that is just you've worn it so much it is stinky it's but you're rank. not sure how to clean it yeah yeah <laughs> i think one of my cosplay horror stories was like uh a friend who i who I, I will not name, but they had a, a cosplay that they had never actually cleaned, but they needed to iron it. And mm -hmm. I was in the vicinity of that steam oh, wafting boy. up and it was oh, about oh, enough no. to make you pass out. Yeah. I am right here. I am <laughs> no, right here. How it wasn't <laughs> you, David. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, this does come from our Discord server. I forgot who asked this to be a episode, so I do deeply apologize. It was a little while ago, but um, do know that we... Hey, we're, we're getting inspired by your questions and your asks. Um, so yes, we are um, actively interested in your questions. Yeah. Mm. And, like I was honestly surprised we hadn't done more to cover this because it is such an important part of like maintenance as far as cosplay. Because your cosplay is not going to last as long if you can't like clean it easily. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. My like initial like thing is that when I'm planning the costume, I look at what can be washed, what can't be washed, and how to uh, like approach that uh, in the design, like just from the beginning before you even and mm -hmm. like what are the materials that you're using and. You know, if you wash it, will it shrink? Well, then are there other ways to to clean it? And doing things like uh, washing the fabric before sewing it is also a really helpful thing um, for a, a number of different reasons. Um, but uh, one of them is it takes care of some of that shrinkage that you might run into or any color changes and stuff like that. So mm. That is true. Pre-washing is a good idea, even if I often forget to do that step. <laughs> um I am oh. sometimes like, but I want to make it now, and I have had to force myself to put it in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Gosh. So this one, like, I had to give it a bit of thought with like all of our varied like cosplays that we enjoy creating. Mm -hmm. Um, they have such different maintenance styles. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Uh, so I was wondering, like, for Mercedes, what are some of your insights on 
say like leather that gets <laughs> stinky or david what has been like a go-to if something gets spilled on one of your props and you're not sure how to clean it well first i cry <laughs> yeah for sure for sure um so with my props most of my stuff is uh got a like veneer of, of a of a spray finish on it so i don't have to worry about like like if a coffee does spill onto it, I don't worry too much that the color is going to stay. Um, but for like foams and things along those lines, it gets a little intense because you're like, what? How do you how do you clean a porous thing? Right. Like, how do you make sure that it's going to be cleaned properly? One of the things that I have done uh, for the Hollow Knight, especially in the helmet, because that got sweaty when you're on stage. Um, was I got some vinegar, some white distilled vinegar in a spray bottle and I sprayed it, let it sit. And then I got a damp rag, not a wet rag, a damp rag. And I wiped down the areas that my head was, was sitting on for an extended period of time. Mm. Uh, you can use alcohol, but I would probably recommend using alcohol in the places that like your glues are not sitting because that could have, a it could affect depending on the type of glue that you're using. So um, if it's something that's going to be not visible, always, always, and, I, and this can go for all three of us, um, no matter what material you're working on, test your uh, cleaning product on an unseen space first. Mm -hmm. You never know Good how the idea. thing is going to react. So find a corner that is like hidden because it's on your stomach or it's going to be like in the very, very top corner of your helmet piece and no one's ever going to see it. Not even a judge, um, even though the judges, they see everything. How do they do it? How do they do it? Practice. We just talked about this um, <laughs> because they're good at, the, uh, at what they do. Um, so, yeah, I, I grab vinegar. I do. I spray that down a little bit. Uh, vinegar is a natural mold cleaning material, so that's very, very good. Alcohol is good. Uh, bleach will stain things, so please don't use bleach um, unless you have it extremely distilled and you're okay with a little bit of discoloration. What else? What else is there with foam? Um, am I missing anything, you guys? I mean, those are those are pretty good ones. I was gonna say it totally depends for me on like what you finish your foam with, because mm -hmm. like. I, in my early days, would do, like, uh, Mod Podge as, like, a final coat. Mm -hmm. And if you're using water, that's not a good choice if you're using water to clean because it's a water-based, water-soluble sort of glaze. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Because, like, <laughs> you'll you'll wash off your protective coating. Exactly. Um, and that's why I'll use, like, a, a spray enamel of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just so that smart. way I can make sure that um it's coated and it's it's safer but mm -hmm. at the same time like it's going to be a little bit more durable the chip uh, the paint won't chip off as easily um but yeah if you still get coffee on it it can still stain the veneer as well so you gotta just gotta be very 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 careful yeah oh mm -hmm. man um but yeah i think i think you covered them real well thank you oh. thank you <laughs> um oh. it never hurts if you're uh if you are, if you've taken off your costume, you're done for the time being. Again, this is something that will test in a small area, but a little bit of Febreze. This is not a replacement, but this will help because you're just kind of like, I will get to this when I get to this. A little bit of Febreze, mist it in the air above, not directly on, will help just kind of like settle some of those odors. Just a little bit. Not like a gym locker room in your middle school. Uh, um, but a little bit of Febreze helps and goes a long way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Febreze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not so much with armor, though. <laughs> with leather armor. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Yeah. So leather, um, uh, if you get, you know, spills or you know, things on it. it. It really depends on what has spilled on it and how. And uh, the the best thing, again, this always comes back to the, the planning process and the building process of planning ahead. Uh, using just raw leather on something without treating it, it is going to wear and tear way faster than if you treat it. And so there's things like, uh, like it's okay to put water on leather. Um, depending, of course, because it can change the color of things and 
whatnot. So you want to test, but you can use a little bit of water to wipe some things off. Uh, you want to be able to do uh, conditioning of your armor. Um, uh, usually, like when you're cur- like making your armor with leather, you can add on uh, like uh, some beeswax kind of thing. Hang on, uh, what is it called? <laughs> It's kind of like a, a wax, but it like it, it like soaks into the leather to help make it waterproof and whatnot. And then you use a conditioner, um, not like the conditioner for your hair. That's it's a different kind, <laughs> um, specifically for leather. And like every like three to six months, you want to actually condition the leather to keep it from getting brittle and breaking and all that. Uh, it also helps keep it clean and waterproof. Um, if your leather does get wet, uh, don't take heat to it uh, because that will warp it and make it brittle Uh, you also want to make sure that you store it in a place where uh, it is well ventilated because if it's in like a sealed plastic bag it will mold weirdly enough (laughs) Um, Hmm. because if there's any moisture in there it'll just do its thing Um, so you want to keep it dry but not too dry it's like it's really picky <laughs> I, i'm really curious yeah. like i know david kind of mentioned with like the, the hollow knight helmet and things like that where you're sweating into it mm-hmm. um that doing like some kind of mixture of like alcohol or vinegar or things like that can be helpful is like alcohol or any other like easy to use substance good for wiping it down or I haven't really tried that because uh, I I usually, again, I try to seal the armor before I put it on something so that I can just wipe it off later. Uh, but like if it's on the raw leather, it's it's just going to cause, it's just going to soak in. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that out. <laughs> um, that makes and sense. So, yeah, that's where like making sure that you're pre- preparing it properly. Mm. Um I didn't realize also that you have to moisturize your leather so much. Moisturize me. You know, I know that's exactly what I was thinking when <laughs> if I was talking about it. <laughs> I yeah, no, if you don't, it starts cracking over time and becoming brittle. Uh, that just, you know, it's no longer armor anymore. It just falls apart. Um, very slowly over time, suede is a different story too. Because mm. um, it's, you know, softer, more textured. Uh, you can put like um, stain repellent spray or like uh, uh, waterproof silicone on it. You have to look for like certain products. Um, this uh, uh, site that I'm looking at says snowproof silicone water and stain repellent spray uh, helps with uh, waterproofing the top layer. Um, but uh Suede is very susceptible to like water issues. Uh, if it gets dirt or dust or you know stuff in it, you have to use like a small wire brush or like a suede brush to get the dirt out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just it just works different. Um, sometimes like if there's like a grease stain or something on suede, you can do like uh, cornstarch. Um, put that on there. Wait for a few, fifteen minutes and then you brush it away. Huh. Um, things like that. So you just kind of got to like, it's not cool. Yeah, but I highly recommend like looking up for like good sources for like if you're like, oh my gosh, this happened to my very specific type of leather X, Y, or Z. I uh, you can look at like the SCA. Um, they are uh like they do sword fighting in leather armor and things like that. Uh, so they have a lot of really good resources on how to care for your armor and keep it clean. Uh, there's also um, uh, Artisans d'Azur. Uh, so that's Artisans uh, d'Azur. Um, it's like the color azure. Uh, they have a how to care for your LARP gear. So live action role play. Oh, that's um, handy. Yeah. So like a lot of this comes from when I did that. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you know LARPers uh, in your area, you can always go and ask them, too, because they probably are, like, you know, history buffs and, uh, you know, fantasy buffs. And they're like, yeah, here, come check out this armor. I'll show you how I care for it. Like, 
it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just picturing them like, yeah, I clean it the same way that I smoke my meat, and they just have like a a, a, a <laughs> like a skewer above a fire, and their like leathers and whatnot are just like getting smoke cleaned by the fire. <laughs> mm, I always smell like bacon. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, can I can I ask like because you, you used to do a lot of wood props? Is there something mm-hmm. different that you would do for some of your more wood based uh, like props that you you you've ha- used or had? Uh, I also seal them. <laughs> nice. Okay. Anything not sealed, it's just gonna soak it in. <laughs> um, so like once I'm done painting and weathering and everything, you put that final coat on, and then just about anything that gets spilled on it can be wiped off. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's really where I go with that. That's why I have such a hard time with like foam armor is that it's, it's a little harder to do that. Like you can seal it, but then it starts getting craftily and I've been working on it. I've been working on it. Um, I've have had more foam armor that I like and better flexible sealants to put on it that have Mm -hmm. made me happy, but it's been a a process. (laughs) I've been traumatized. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Pannon, we've got we, we're we're coming for you at this point because you oh. have all of the fabric experience. Oh my goodness! Mm. So, gosh, it really depends. Um, which is why I wanted to cover like a, a few different fabrics. First of all, like depends completely on what you're making your costume out of, right? Some fabrics you absolutely should not put in a washing machine. Um, and you should only take to a dry cleaner, even if it's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> Listen, I know, I know it's strange, but it's from a game called Genshin Impact. You just gotta, you just gotta <laughs> yeah. go with me on this one. I'm so sorry. The eye patch too has to be cleaned. The eye patch is very important. <laughs> well, here, I thought you were gonna go for the the oratrice mechanique Denise Cardinal. I couldn't say that if I wanted to. Oh, all right, gosh. like my ma- my mouth and my brain do not communicate I in cannot. that direction. I could. I am not. amazed I could. I had. To, <laughs> do you know how many times I had to like practice that before I could get it out? <laughs> um, but but yeah, um, one of the things that can really trip you up too is if you have different kinds of like natural and synthetic fabrics going at war with each other on your costume. Um, the safest option is going to be, yes, take it to a dry cleaner. Sometimes that's not an option. Like I, oh, I once made the mistake of washing one of my, it was like a, a bridal satin that I put in one of my, or I made one of my ball gowns out of, I put it through a washing machine and it is like 10, 12 yards of fabric on a single dress. And so the washing machine did not like it. Oh, no. Um, it also wasn't a great washing machine. So like the top half came out real clean and the bottom half just was water stains and like some kind of Whoa. oil had gotten in there. Ah! And like I took it to a dry cleaner after and they were like, there's nothing we can do. No. Uh, I know it was very sad. <laughs> but um yeah, it was yeah, it be careful with your washing machines. If I, I would say if you're even at all worried, like take it to a dry cleaner. Um you can do dry cleaning at home. Uh they make like I think you can buy them in like the the same aisle you get your laundry products in but they have gosh i did this with my like princess serenity like that really fancy uh chiffon whatnot dress right Mm -hmm. um i wore that one so much it was cost prohibitive to always take it to be dry cleaned so i got one of the dry clean at home bags and it costs like i think 30 something dollars to get the little kit but mm-hmm. then you can wash it like five or six times. Ooh. Um, yeah. And it comes with like a big, like probably two or three times the size of a pillowcase bag uh, that you put your costume inside of. Um, and then you like add, I think it has like a, like a little wet nap kind of thing that's covered with the like dry cleaning chemicals that you throw in with it. And then you actually put it through your dryer cycle. Um, uh, and it cleans and pulls out all the like stains and stuff. 
Huh. Um, yeah, which is I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, that one was a good one as as an at home dry clean option. I had really good luck with that. If you did not do your pre washing, I would say always machine wash cold if it's something that can be washed in a machine Mm -hmm. um just because different fabrics like a v fire set are going to shrink uh depending on uh how they interact with heat um some of them will be fine and some of them will not be fine lost my train of thought but (laughs) we've all pretty much determined that like it's cold wash is the best wash right like yeah yeah like for no matter what because then you can mix the, your your it, like all of your clothes together and then you make sure that everything's <laughs> taken care of it's the easiest and it's cheap. I, I don't know i see i do like the warm cold the warm cold like swap because i like a little bit of heat to get in there like but that's not with my costumes that's like everyday stuff okay uh, okay all right I, I, i'm not i'm not I just I run everything on cold, so you know if I we're ever doing laundry together if for whatever doing reason, the trick, yeah, <laughs> you know it's going to be safe if you wash cold. You know exactly, exactly. And I and I'm since I'm colorblind, it's so easy to not have to worry about <laughs> parsing out my reds from my greens. You know what? That's a that's a fair point. Um, <laughs> um oh, I was going to mention like as far as like historical care of like bigger dresses costumes etc um like that's one of the reasons i really like building uh like foundation undergarments for different dresses or clothing or costumes like things like corsets or a chemise or like a slip or whatnot because those are like a protective layer between you and the costume and so instead of having to wash the costume after every wear, you wash all the under things that touched your body, and then you can wash the actual costume itself less often. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, or you can like hand wash the costume or like dry clean the costume as it may need, but you don't need to do it as often because you have that kind of like a barrier garment. Mm, Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why you'll see like a lot of the uh, older, really fancy, like Victorian and before era dresses, like would sometimes not get washed or get washed very rarely. Some of them were too like fancy with all the embroidery and beading and whatnot to go in the wash. So they Mm -hmm. had to have these foundational garments to like, yeah, have something between you. Small, small random tangent, but not totally random. So... When I was on that mini trip, we stopped by one of the historical uh, pioneer places in St. George, mm-hmm. and they had a silk dress in there that was made at one of the silk farms that they had in St. George, and it was really gorgeous. Um, but uh, I found out my mom made silk as a child. Oh my wow. gosh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. They would go around, they would have um, the silkworms in like a little bag around their necks and as soon as they started like getting ready to come out of their cocoons they would like whatever they were doing they would stop and take that bag to uh you know home boil the poor things <laughs> my, oh. my mom remembers feeling a little bad for them um and then she remembers pulling the the silk from the cocoons and Neat. or how, however it was but yeah you have to kill the worms before they uh eat their cocoons so <laughs> yeah interesting yeah, sorry. random thing is like wait you're talking about like these you know things well, being that, that's where it came from <laughs> no that, that's actually brings me into some of the fabrics i wanted to talk about because there are some fabrics that can it can cause issues if you even get them wet and silk, silk uh, is one of is them, one of them. <laughs> yeah if you're using like real raw silk um i mean there are ways you can wash it but some silks like will just not be the same or will get like water stained if you're even like out in the rain. Wow. Um, so you have to be really careful with if you're if you're going on the fancy end of things. One of the other ones you have to be careful even getting wet is wool. Um, just because it can shrink so easily. Um, it is not something you should even get like warm when it's wet. 
because yeah you will get you you know like the cartoons where they'll put like a wool sweater in the wash and it comes out and it's like the size for a doll super super tiny yeah 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 <laughs> like that that is no joke like if you put <laughs> wool or i mean if you're using wool that's a really expensive fabric but like it will shrink quite a bit mm-hmm. in if, if you put it in warm water um or water at all it can cause shrink so yeah just be really (laughs) be really careful and know what you're wearing know what kind of fabric it is if it's something that you ordered online um hopefully it included a tag that will tell you um most of the uh costumes you can order online are going to be made out of some kind of like poly blend so they should be okay to go in the wash but i would still wash cold yeah same for like spandex and things like that if you're doing like superhero suits and whatnot like you can still machine wash it just make sure it's cold um is there anything special i need to do for velvet because i know velvet's used frequently (sighs) velvet is tough like if i can i will not have it anywhere near my actual skin because it is (laughs) it is such a bugger to like make it as nice as it was when you got it um the trouble with velvet right is so velvet has like do you call it like a weave or a nap or something like the the velvet little fibers stick up and they want to bend a certain way because of how they're made right Mm -hmm. and it's like it's almost like a very small head of hair with a buzz cut is how velvet is up close right um it's just like all these little tiny bristles and what happens when they get wet is it's almost like giving it a cowlick so oh. uh you know, right? so you have to like be really careful of like how you dry it i know there are like velvet brushes you can get so that like as it's drying or once it's dried you can brush it out and get it close to what it was um but velvet is another one that you have to be really careful with because of that specific texture that it has interesting I would have yeah. never, I would, I like the microscopic view is very interesting to me. I, I never would have considered that. Yeah. Well, one of the other like neat things you can do with velvet is like you can do kind of an embossing sort of a thing. Like if you heat uh, whatever you're using to iron or whatnot in a very specific shape, mm-hmm. you can like emboss that shape into your fabric. Um, so it is like taking that sticky uppy fuzz and your forcing it to be flat right so that's some and it makes a a neat design that when it catches the light um so just very cool (laughs) yeah yeah so velvet is a really cool like versatile fabric and it looks so fun on a stage like it, it can look incredible on stage but you should know and be careful uh there are definitely some like synthetic weave like certain percentage synthetic velvets you can get that are a lot easier to handle in Mm -hmm. like a a dry clean bag or in like a even just washing on cold um like i have i have some velvets that i have to like be very careful even how i fold them because they'll get a crease in them and then i have some like poly velvet that are so like i can just wad it in a ball and throw it in the closet and it's fine i just shake it out and it's you know, perfectly fine. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> it depends on, it depends on your fabric. So just more advice for you to like, know what you're working with or know what was sent to you. So you know how to treat it properly. Um, and, and of course, if you're not sure, you can always Google it. Um, you can always use our, even our discord and, and like post a, a close up of the weave or a close up of like what the fabric is and see if you can get some advice for how to how to clean it. Um, gosh, I was going to mention a couple of products I like to have just in my toolkit. There's Tide pens, of course, because like if you are at a con and you spill like mayo on your all white whatever you might be wearing um <laughs> bum, bum, something bum. that's gonna something where it's really gonna show i i always try to bring a tide pen with me just so i can like at least get the cleaning solution into it while it's still a wet stain instead of once it's dried in 
Gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah. Or be like me and, you know, walk around for a little while and then realize, is that the ranch for my lunch? Oh, dang the, it. Yeah. Uh, oh, beans. <laughs> I mean, it also depends on, like, what the stain is made of, because all of them are going to be treated differently. I think we've mentioned before that if it's blood, like, you can use your own spit is one of the best ways to get it out as of the fabric. As long as it's your blood. Yeah, as long as it's I was gonna say, <laughs> your own spit to your own blood, just because it has the same or different, or well, the same enzymes and things that can break it down. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a real thing. Like, if you accidentally, like, bleed onto your costume... And you need to get it out. You can use your spit because you're specifically spit... the owner's. Sp- oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't. It, I don't know how to react to this. I'm. I'm amazed. I'm confused, <laughs> and I'm a little concerned. But <laughs> it works, though. It. It really does. Like I have bled onto way more costumes than I should. But you know. Wow! That's, wow! That's wow. how I claim it as mine. Is I. I have to have at least bled on it while building it. <laughs> um, sacrifice to the cosplay gods yes <laughs> the contract has been made <laughs> um, one of my oh gosh one of my favorite cleaners though if you're like really worried about a cosplay okay i made lana from hyrule warriors and this is like in her goddess outfit right so she's like all white but it's white on white with like a purple lining mm-hmm. and i Thought I had done enough pre-washing to the purple fabric, but I did not anticipate my hairspray blowing up in my bag on my flight to the con. Oh. And <laughs> so I got in there and the purple or the hairspray had gotten into the purple fabric, which had bled into the white parts of the costume. And I was like devasp- devastated because I had spent hundreds of hours like hand sewing this costume, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it suddenly had like, purple stains all over it and one of my friends came over and she was like have you tried i think it's like oxyclean gel specifically it comes in like almost looks like a deodorant tube full of gel Hmm. Um, and you just like crank the bottom and a little bit more a little bit comes out at a time and you just kind of blot it onto the stains and then let it sit there work its magic and then rinse it out Mm -hmm. um i i thought that costume was unsalvageable but after just like overnight and then i washed it out before like first thing in the morning and let it hang dry and it was ready for a photo shoot later that con um yeah i (laughs) i I was ready to be devastated but it got the stains out and i have like sworn by that stuff ever since so yeah i i I could understand why (laughs) yeah so those are those are my go-tos but i i think it's also important what you mentioned with like the leather uh items is how you store it i think that is true for costumes props armor whatever you have um how you store it's also going to have a big impact on the life of the costume and on how often you need to wash it yeah don't want to just like put it out in the garage in a cardboard box because you might come back and it's full of like moth holes and the rat living in there later you know <laughs> I, and like in the same way that you want to like take care of it beforehand you like afterwards rather you will do want to take care of yourself beforehand as well like if you oh my it, gosh that is a very good point <laughs> you shower you clean yourself up <laughs> make sure that like you know, you are ready to go into the costume. Now I understand, you know, day three of the con and you're probably like on like six hours of of sleep for the entire weekend and you may not have the energy to shower shower and you're just kind of doing some, you know, pamper. Mm. Uh, But at the same time, like, the cleaner that you are, the longer those clothes stay clean as well. Like, yeah, you're gonna be running around, the floors are dirty, everything's a mess, but take care of yourself. You get to take care of everything else around you too. That, that is such a good You be point. clean, your costume be clean, <laughs> your roommates, uh, thank you for being clean. Yes, <laughs> your fellow con-goers. Uh, everybody likes likes it better when you clean. Again, I mean, it was one time, you guys. I can't believe <laughs> you're just airing my dirty laundry like this. Uh, I mean, I was going to say, like, unless you're cosplaying, like, a character who looks like they've been rolling in the dirt for a week, and then, like, feel free to look as dirty and stinky as you want. Yeah, Um <laughs> Yeah, love it. 
Uh, uh, I'm Hobo um, Joe from the Hobo Joe anime. Oh no. Uh, but I think that's all I had. How about you guys? Uh yeah, I like I only have so much experience. Ooh, I wanted to ask about wigs. I forgot I was gonna ask oh about my wigs. Gosh. How do you keep your wig clean? Because you got the cap, that's gonna get all sweaty. I imagine you could wash the cap easier, but like that I don't ever want to touch another wig after yeah. you know Harley Quinn. Oh my gosh. You can clean um, them. Yeah, you could you can and please do. Um I oh, I have a hard time with this because I get migraines really easily. Like that's just a chronic issue that I have. And so sometimes having like a wig cap and a wig um is really painful for me. Mm-hmm. Um so I wear the wig on like my hair as long as I've like pinned it up into like pin curls. Mm-hmm. Um but the caveat to that is I have to wash my wigs a lot more often. Um because you're you're getting more sweat and yuck on them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um so I mean do what works best for you. Just keep the clean in mind. Um but what I would say is with wigs, what my favorite go-tos are, and this may vary. I would I would love to hear from our listeners on some of these. Um, but I like to get like a baby shampoo, something really gentle is what I use on wigs. Um, mostly because you're, you're not going to need an expensive shampoo, honestly, mm-hmm. um, because wig fiber does not absorb the way hair follicles do. Um, you're literally washing plastic. I mean, unless you happen to have a human fiber wig and then feel free. But for most wigs, it's going to be like Kanekalon. And that's a plastic. And so you're just washing off what's on the surface of the plastic. Um, mostly you're going to want to wash the interior wig cap because that's what's going closest to all of your sweat and skin. Right. So, yeah, I would I would say go with like a, a cheaper end or a baby shampoo. Um, you can also look up uh, wig cleaners and they have some that are like specifically yeah. made for the different fibers. Yeah, um, and they're not will super swear. expensive. Yeah, some people swear yeah. by like the Mane and Tail brand, um, mm-hmm. which I know is not available in all areas. Um, but I mean, I've had good luck even with like a, a cheap like dollar kind of shampoo that's just clarifying because I know that's focused on cleaning. Hmm. I really like there's a product called It's a 10. Um, that's like a spray in like, uh, and I will brush that through the wig once I've cleaned it as kind of a conditioner. Um, the thing I like with that is it keeps the hair fibers, wig fibers from like sticking to each other as much. I like to use that even when I'm like between washes, if I have an exceptionally long or tangly prone wig, because it works almost as good as a silicone spray. Mm. uh as far as like keeping your wig from tangling Mm -hmm. um but yeah the the biggest is like making sure you wash thoroughly you can even let it soak for a day or so in a like in in a nice little vat um and then also like the other important thing is giving it plenty of time to dry because Mm -hmm. with wig fibers if you brush it while it's still wet or in any way like warm Um, I wouldn't use hot, hot water, but you can use warm water on wigs. Um, But if you try to brush it while it's still wet or still warm, it's going to pull and stretch the fibers. Um, So you want to make sure that it's room temp. It has dried completely. You've given it plenty of time to like thoroughly dry. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I think I have learned new things. Uh, I, I know that some people on our Discord server, I saw uh, Quinn was talking about wigs the other day, so I'm sure that'll be super helpful. Oh, I saw Quinn got like a whole bunch of new wigs in. On yeah, the- they are. They look so gorgeous on the like in all of them. Um, it's so funny, like because they're buying like cheap, cheap wigs. Uh, and uh-huh. this isn't like a like they're crap wigs. They're like lower, lower expense. And it's so funny because they're like, I don't really like this one. I was like, yeah, those are the ones that you get to practice with. Those are the ones like you can trim and yeah. style and figure out what works well with, with you. So they're super excited to like try new stuff so nice nice well i hope they will share those in in our discord when they're done but uh ending on such a happy note like do we have any horror stories horror stories spooky 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 
spooky. Oh, spooky. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we do. I just have to pull up the right channel because I get distracted by the food all the dang time. The food one's so good. I'm so glad we did that. Uh, so this one, uh, it comes from our cosplay dis discord. We have a whole channel dedicated just to cosplay horror stories. Uh, Bookie Bear writes, not really a horror story, but it was scary to my wallet. So <laughs> sweat emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when you want to save money on shipping, so you go to Joanne's, but they don't have chiffon in the color you need, so you grab the white dye. But the color recipe needs two different colors, so you grab those. Then you go to the threads. But wait, there's no thread in the exact teal that's lighter weight than 40. Oh, oh hey, silver would look nice and match your accessories. Ah, <laughs> drat. There's only <laughs> one type of silver that's 70 weight. And it's $13 each. Oh, oh, no. Hey, there's a sale. Buy three, get three. I should grab more. <laughs> hmm. But I only need one silver to look nice. But hey, let's grab three of them so I can use it for three thread serger, serger patterns later on. And I guess three of random other metallics so I get the best value of the three of equal or lesser value deal. And now... A trip to save money ended up costing me forty-four dollars. <laughs> oh, oopsie daisy! I don't, that that feels like a very relatable. Like any time that I go to a con, of like I girl math the heck out of it, you know? Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Oof. Well, lessons lessons learned for sure. Definitely. For sure. Mm. Uh, if y'all would like to share one of your horror stories or give us ideas for new episodes or just say hi, you can do that a number of different ways. First is our email, which is cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or... Or you can go to the website cosplaystitchandseam.com and fill up the contact forms there or... Go to the Facebook page. We have a fantastic community of people. They want to see what you're working on. We want to hear your horror stories. If you're not a big fan of Facebook, we totally get it. You can always join our Discord. You can find the link on our website. We greatly, greatly appreciate any support. And some of the support, some of the ways that you could support us are by just sharing the podcast with a friend. That is always like the easiest, cheapest way. Just share that podcast with a friend. Remember, you can always just grab their phone. We know that they've got a podcast app. <laughs> Just grab your, just subscribe, just subscribe. What's, yeah. what's, they're not going to be mad. All of a sudden they hear that lovely little theme song and then it's just our three voices just making silly little jokes about cosplay. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Look at me. You know, it's a good thing. They'll enjoy it and they'll thank you for it. While you're also sharing your, you're sharing your podcast or just installing it uh, on people's phones, you can also leave <laughs> us some those reviews really help the algorithm as well. And if you've got some dollars burning a hole in your pocket, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch. And some of the amazing people that we need to thank are <gasps> Misty Lee, Jack S, Cynthia Eve, Cosplay, Star Fetcher, Trough Cause, Lydia, Yggdrasil, Dr. Steggy, Cynics, Hot Riku, Renamira, Jazzy Kofed, Jaguar Queen, Gloria Shu, Sudi, and <gasps> Silver Oh, yeah. Nice. Thanks, as always, to Macy Roberts for the use of her music as our theme song, and to David Jeffress for Faye's amazing editing. How are your podcasts going, David? They are going so stinking great, getting a lot of editing done, taking care of myself, making sure we're pacing it out. Everything's going great. Go check out Comic Trades Monthly if you enjoy your comic books in a book club format. I'm pushing Dane to talk about Akira. I'm pushing Ooh. Dane. Uh, that. We're about to hit actually our hundredth episode, so we're going to be doing like a, a like a little hot ones, ask us anything kind of thing. So we're really excited for that. Um, the last voice is up and out there. Uh, also, I mentioned this in the past. These are live now. Um, I don't know if they're available everywhere, but on Spotify, if you search "Real Ghost Stories of Borneo," I have my audiobooks that I have read for book yes. one and book six are now available. Nice. Congrats. Thank you. Sweet. That's so cool. I keep meaning to pick that one up. I'm just waiting for like my next paycheck. Yes. Okay. Are you guys ready for some puns? I am. Uh, yeah, Are you ever ready. really ready? <laughs> okay. So the, the best advice for cleaning up your maker space is it's easy. You pick it up as you go along. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I feel attacked. But my I favorite. I feel attacked. 
my favorite that I found was how do you contact the spirit of a recently deceased window cleaner? Uh, I, I I don't know how. You use a squeegee board. Uh... <laughs> 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 Bye, guys. Bye. <sighs>